How you fight your battles? I fight my battles with truth. With the truth of the word. Amen? That's how you fight your battles. Amen? So we're going into the book of John. John chapter 8. And I promised pastor I would slow down. I do get excited about the word. I, I make no apologies for that. But I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. I got a lot of scripture. This is more scripture. We're not going to put them all up there. So listen to the scriptures. And next week, I promise you, if you want the scriptures on truth, we'll have that out there for you. All right? So we're going to the book of John, the book of John, the gospel of John, the beloved disciple, the one that laid his head on Jesus' breast. Amen. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm going to get my scriptures. Father, we do love you. We count it joy to be called your children. Without you, we can do nothing, nothing of importance. Nothing that's impactful to the kingdom without you. So we ask for your anointing, not just upon me, but upon your people, that the spirit will arise and the spirit will witness to the spirit, and they will hear clearly what thus said the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, we're going to begin at verse 31. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Now, understand the surrounding, surrounding here, a multitude of people have come to Jesus and he's teaching. And, and amongst them are the, the Jewish people and his disciples. He said that if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. Indeed. That's an important word. Watch it come back up. Verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answer him, we be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How says thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Barely, barely, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I'm going to jump to verse 40. Because they're going back, uh, they being Abraham's seed, and Jesus said, I I'm, I'm from God. I'm God's son. But verse 40 says, but now you seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I heard of God, this did not Abraham. For you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither have I, neither came I of myself, but sent, but he sent me. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. The lust of your father you would do. For he was a murderer from the beginning, aboded not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, I like it like that. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? That he that, that, he that is of God, get this, because this is for us. He that is of God hears God's word. Ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. My topic is walking in truth. 
When I was younger, there, there was two programs. This is back in the 70s. There was one to tell the truth. It was a game show, to tell the truth. I'm not sure if y'all ever saw that. And, and to tell the truth was they would have three people on stage, and they all would be named John Smith. It was up for the audience to, to determine which one was really John Smith. They all had poses when they introduced them, they introduced them with the same characteristics. They didn't through a series of questions. They would ask them, and at the end, they'd say, now, which one is the real John Smith? Number one was kind of act like he's going to stand, two, act like he's going to stand, but number three, was, that was the real John Smith. But the other show was called Truth or Consequences. It was a game show, Truth or Consequences. And the consequence is you're going to find out the truth or the consequence that you're going to lose points, you're going to lose the game. And today you are in truth or consequences. And the truth is that, that, that you're going to live by truth or die in a lie. Live by truth or die in the lie. Because the world is darker and getting darker and darker. Hmm. How many of y'all seen the Few Good Men? The movie Few Good Men. I love that movie. I love that movie because, because it's a scene between Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. He got him in court. And Tom Cruise, you know, he, 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 he drilling Jack Nicholson. But Jack Nicholson, is, 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 he's stumbling around the answers. And Tom Cruise furiously say, I want answers. And Jack Nick said, you want answers? He said, I want answers. He said, I want the truth. Jack Nick said, Jack Nick said, Piercy, you can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. So I ask you right now, can you handle the truth today? Can you handle the truth today? Can you live in truth today? Can you walk in truth? Can you trust truth? In John 8, that third one just says that if you continue in my word, you should be my disciples indeed. You should be my disciples indeed. And you should know, Jesus said, we can know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But in order to handle the truth and live in truth and walk in truth, you must first know that what truth is and how to distinguish truth or discern truth from a lie. You must know what truth is. And I love it. He, he said, you should know the truth, and the truth should what? Make you free. Some of them say, set you free. No, I said, I didn't want you to repeat it, because I will repeat it. But I want to show you there's a difference between being set free and being made free. You probably never saw it that way, but I'm going to show it to you. The truth will make you free. Because here's the deal. Just, just to me, the difference between set free and being made free. Set free to me indicate that when you find yourself in a situation and need to be and, 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 need, and need to be free again, you have to find some new truth. You have to find some new truth. It's, it's, it's almost like a caged animal, Pastor Simon. When the animal gets caged in that cage, if someone has mercy, they'll set it free. But he can get trapped again. Right? That's about just about being set free. But here's the deal about being made free. That the truth will make you free. It's make you free. It's, 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 it's indicating that it, that it's, it's indicating that once you know the truth, the absolute truth, you will never be trapped or entangled in bondage again. Neither been enslaved in sin or, or disobedient again. Once you truly know the truth, it's, 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 it's exactly right there. When you read when, when you read the open doors of chapter eight. You got the woman that said, take him in adultery. That's the beginning of chapter 8. They take the woman, and everybody said, well, where's the man there? Because he was caught in the act of adultery. And they throw the woman in front of Jesus. Hmm. Said, take him in adultery. So I'm going to show you the difference between set and make. When they bring the woman to Jesus, 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 he just, don't look up at it. He just shoots down and right. He without sin. Cast the first stone. He's just right. And it said from the oldest to the youngest, drop their stones and walked away. He set her free then from a captive. She set free. But he goes on. He said, woman, is there any that condemns you? He looked around. No, master. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. She's made free right there. 
You see the difference? She's made free. She was set free from the captive, but she was made free when Jesus said, go and sin no more. You should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. Hallelujah. To walk in truth, walk in truth, or live in truth, or die in the lie. And the lie is that, 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 that you are a slave to sin. That, that the lie is that, 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 that you're fearful, full of fear. That's a lie from the devil. You've been set free. You're not a slave to sin. You don't have to live in fear. That's the lie. He says in verse 36, if the Son, which is Jesus, therefore make you free, you're free indeed. That, that's indeed, indeed. That's an absolute freedom. This freedom to me, this freedom to me is both external and internal. It's an external that you don't have to walk around in a pity party. You don't have to walk around with your head down. You don't have to have a victim mentality. That's the outward part, but it's the internal that no matter what your condition, that this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I'm free. But it's also an eternal freedom. Hallelujah. It's eternal freedom as well. That you will be with the Lord. In the end, amen? He who the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible speaks of, the Bible speaks of the word of truth, the spirit of truth, the God of truth. We're talking about the undisputable, the unwavering, undenying truth, faith that comes from, the truth that comes from God, amen? That you've been totally free. So, so Dave, 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 David, after he sinned with Bathsheba, Remember that sad story? He sinned with Bathsheba. Bathsheba. He plotted a lie to kill her husband. A child is born. The child dies. Then Nathan comes to David. You know the story. Say, you the one. You the man. And David was broken. He repented. But Psalm 51. This is what David said in verse 6. The Psalm 51. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward part. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know freedom, wisdom. Then he drops down to verse 10 of Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. Restore the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. You're free in the Lord because you know truth. Amen? So, 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 so truth is not something that you keep in your head or you wear on your sleeve or you pour out a book. Truth is from God and must reside inside of you. Hallelujah. As a child of God, as a believer of Christ, your being, your whole essence, the innateness should be true. Hallelujah. Are you tracking with me? Somebody say preach, man. <laughs> in verse 44, John chapter 8. Jesus tells the Jews that want to kill him, you're just like your father, the devil. He's a father of lies. He can't tell the truth is not in him. Truth must dwell inside of you once you get the truth and understand the truth. In other words, you, can't, you cannot have a double identity as a believer to know truth and to live in the lie. You can't say that you know truth and live in a lie. That's double identity, and you can't do that in Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul, 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 Paul say, what is truth? So what is truth? And Paul asked that question over 2,000 years ago with Jesus. What is truth? And that's the question today in this dark world, in this world that is polluting the truth. What is truth? What is truth? So Paul asked that in John 18, verse 38. Paul asked the question, but he doesn't wait for an answer. He doesn't wait for an answer. He neither, neither does he recognize that truth is standing right before him. Truth is standing right before him. He doesn't know that. He doesn't wait for an answer. Hmm. Because he goes out, he, he leaves truth and serves a lie. He leaves truth and serves a lie. And, and, and how do we do that? Because he says, you have a custom that on this day that I can release the prisoner. Here stand Jesus, here stand Barabbas. Which one you want? Give us Barabbas. He, they leave truth 
and take the line. Give us Barabbas. So what do we do with Jesus? Crucify him. Crucify him. So, so you want to kill truth and let the lie live. You kill truth and let the lie live. That's what he did. And that's where we live. That's where we are today. We, our world is leaving truth and serving the lie. That's the state of the world, the state of the world today. State of our family, the state of our children, of our country, the church even, leaving truth and serving the lie. And the Bible says, let the words of God be true and all men a liar. So what is truth? How do we get truth and where does truth come from? I'm going to quickly just give you three things. The entry of truth. The effects of truth. The, the, the epitome of truth. Are you ready? Let's deal with the entry of truth. First of all, there, there has been great philosophers and theologians and, and great debate and discussion on truth since the days of Socrates and Plato. And, and St. Saint, Saint Augustine says this here. The ideal of truth comes not from experience nor from wisdom, but it's innate in man. It cannot come from a sense of knowledge nor wisdom, for these things are changeable. But the truth is not changeable. That's powerful, isn't it? The truth is not changeable. Amen? So, but the world will tell you today, the world will tell you to, to make your own truth. That's what they're saying, make your own truth. The world say that there's no absolute truth. But that's the lie. Jesus said that you can know truth. And the truth said what? Make you free. So the entry of truth. The entry of truth comes, you see it right there in John. Again, I'll give you these scriptures. They probably won't put them up. They won't put them up there. John chapter 1, verse 14. It says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. First John, I mean, John again, chapter 1, verse 17. He said, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, amen? amen? Truth can stand by itself, but, but when, when it's accompanied with grace, truth and grace accompany each other. That's dunamis. That's power. Truth and grace. Later on, you're going to say truth and mercy. Amen? So we talk about the, the entry of truth. John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus said unto Thomas, Darling Thomas, the one said, I won't believe until I put my hands, in, in, until I put my hand into this nail scar hand. Jesus says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto me but by the Father. So let's go back to Pilate for a minute. In verse 30, 37, before he asks what is truth, this is what the conversation is. Therefore, Pilate therefore said unto him, Jesus, Art thou king? Jesus answered, Thou said that I am a king. And he says, this is Jesus, to this end was I born. To this end was I born. And to, for this cause, I came into the world that I should bear witness of what? The truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Is Jesus saying that God is truth? Is that what he's saying? Yeah, he's saying that God is truth. That's what he's saying. But, but he also says... Notice he says, there's a cause and there's an end. I like that, Pastor Mickey. He says, look at it again. He says, for this end was I born, and for this cause came I. There's a cause and an end. The truth, the truth is not a cause to bring an end, but it's an end to bring a cause. You hear me? It's not a cause to bring it, but, but it's not a cause to bring the end, but an end to bring a cause. Truth is an end of itself. You hear me? For this cause, in other words, to bear witness to the truth, that's the cause. To bear witness to the truth, that to, to be a light that the world doesn't have to live under a lie. That's why you can't. You don't have to live, you don't have to live in sin. That's why Jesus came to, to bear witness that there's a light has come into the world to all men. That's truth. That's the cause. To this end, that everyone that hears, 
everyone that hears the truth. They're going to follow, they're going to obey, and they're going to return to godliness. That's where repentance comes in. That's what he's saying, to this end and to this cause. In other words, truth eliminates the lie that the devil sold to Adam and Eve in the garden. That's what it did. Truth eliminates the lie that the devil sold to Adam and Eve in the garden. To this end, hmm, to this end, that if Jesus is truth and it dwells in you to the fullness, should cause you, should cause you to, to, to radically follow him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your might, that no matter what the world is trying to give you, you're going to follow truth. No matter what the devil is selling, you're going to follow truth. No matter what riches you can gain in the lie, you're going to follow truth. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Hallelujah. You should know the truth and truth should make you free. And Jesus is the truth given to us by the Father, the God of truth. So let's go to the effects of truth. The effects of truth. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 25, when Paul looked around in Rome, and he saw the filth and the debauchery of the, not just the Roman, but the whole world. This is what Paul says in verse 25, Romans 1. Who has changed the truth of God into a lie? Isn't that what's going on today? They have trained, changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worship and serve the creature, which is talking about the creation. They worship and serve the creation more than the creator who is blessed forever. The only way to eliminate a lie is by truth. You hear me? The only way to eliminate a lie is by truth. The only way to, the only way to try to destroy truth is surrounded by a lie. The only way to try to destroy truth is surrounded by a lie. But even in surrounding truth, truth still going to stand. Truth still is going to stand. Truth is from God. Truth brings life. A lie brings death. So the effects of truth... In the verse, I'm just going to tell you, it's in verse Romans, I mean, uh, John chapter 8, going back to that, you can read it later. But in verses 33 to 36, it says that the truth will make you free. That's the effects of truth. Verses 37 to 40, it says that truth will bring you into a relationship with the Son and the Father. Verses 37 through 40. Verses 41 through 46, it removes you from the devil's army and puts you in God's kingdom. That's the effect of truth. Amen. Then verse 47, say that you're free. You're free when you got truth. You can hear God's word clearly. He that have truth will hear. Hallelujah. My sheep knows my voice. And another, they will not follow. Hallelujah. So when you know truth, when you know truth, you have no problem trusting God. You hear me? When you truly know truth, you have no problem trusting God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Hmm. Proverbs 12, verse 19. The lips of truth should be established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Hmm. Talk about the effects of truth. Proverbs 3 and 3. Let not mercy or truth forsake thee. Bind them about your neck. Write them up on the tablets of your heart. Psalms 85.10. Again, I'll get these for you next week. Psalms 85.10. Mercy and truth. First you had grace and truth. Now you got mercy and truth. I love it, Pastor Mick. He says, mercy and truth are together. Mm, isn't that good? That's good news. Mercy and truth are together. They're in a marriage. And they produce righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to see. Let me read it. It's like a marriage and they're going to produce this here. It says, mercy and truth are together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy and truth in a marriage have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Can't be separated. You can't separate righteousness, truth, peace. Amen. And grace. You can't separate them. Righteousness, peace, grace, truth, 
mercy all bundle up together. You should know the truth, and the truth should make you free. Let's talk about the epitome of truth. The epitome of truth. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. I love it. He said, he is the rock. He is the rock. We know each other. Who, who is he talking about? Who is he talking about? But Jesus, for sure. But this is Deuteronomy. Is Jesus in Deuteronomy? Yes, he's there. But he's known by who? God. God. He is the truth. That, that's what it's saying. It's saying God. This is doing Moses. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways of judgment. A God of truth. That's, that's Deuteronomy 32, 4. When you look, you go write it, find your Bible and mark it up. Highlight it. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth without iniquity. Just and right is he. The epitome of truth is God. And stand on God's word. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it see him not, neither know him. But you know him, for he dwells in you and shall be, for he dwells in you and shall be in you, that nothing can separate you from truth. Hallelujah. The world will try to pull you away from truth, but it shouldn't separate you from truth. John 16, 13, how be it then, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but, but whatsoever he shall hear, shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Things to come. You don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to walk in, in uncertainty because you got the truth inside of you. You got the word right here. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I get understanding in the word of God. I get understanding right here. The truth is here. The word lets all the world be a lie, and the truth is here. Hallelujah. John 4, verse 24. The spirit, the God, God is the spirit. And they that worship him must, must, must what? Worship him and what? Spirit and what? Truth. Hmm. The epitome of truth is God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me wipe my glasses. Hallelujah. Y'all get excited? Is anybody excited about the truth? Hallelujah. Give me one second. I'm going to get a up there. Y'all track with me? Anybody check in your notes? So, I'm wrapping it up. We talk about the entry of truth, the effect of truth, and the epitome of truth. But I want to give you the power of truth. The power of truth. In the courtroom, they ask, Pastor Eustace, they ask. In the courtroom law, they ask, do you swear to tell the truth? Nothing but the, the whole, now they say the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They used to have them put their hands on the Bible. But they know that ain't going to work anymore because they put the Bible out, right? But they still say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And I have to ask myself, that's just one truth. Well, I got to tell, I mean, the, the whole truth is the whole truth. And they say, swear, swear by God. I, I, I wonder, do, they, they say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me, God. And I was wondering, would the soul help me, God, that if I call the lie, he'll have mercy or not? <laughs> if I'm calling the lie on the courtroom, will he have mercy? Because you know, poor be lying, supposed to be lying in court. It's, 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 it's a, a punishment in prison, right? So help me, God. But it's the truth is the truth, the whole truth. Hallelujah. The power of truth. That's the power of truth that, that truth can be surrounded by lies. It's surrounded by lies, but truth will stand and be, and the truth will remain. No matter how many lies are surrounded, the truth will remain. It, it, it won't get convoluted in the lie. It won't get caught up in the lie. You're going to stand out. And the judge should know 
Unless he caught up in corruption. Hallelujah. He ain't put his hand on the Bible. The truth, in other words, the truth penetrates darkness and it shines light on a lie. Amen. The truth penetrates darkness and shines light, light on the lie. It's like a light switch being turned on in the darkest room. That's what truth would do. Truth destroys and demolishes the lie. That's what the devil, that's why the devil is defeated. Let me give you this story. Yesterday, Barbara's brother, come all the way here from Houston, him and his wife on the plane. He the one who produced the CD. Excited about being here, and then lo and behold, before we get started, he realized he had lost his wallet. You can imagine that you in from Houston, got to get back on the plane, you have lost your wallet, you're here to have a good time. So he checked the restroom and said, maybe I, maybe I lost in the restroom. It's not there. He said, well, the last place I had it was at the restaurant. He said, let me go back that way. His wife called the restaurant. And lo and behold, the restaurant got the wallet. Amen. The devil's a liar. He tried to mess up the whole day. But the devil is a liar. Then the truth should make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're talking about the power of truth. That's the only way to eliminate a lie is through the truth. Amen. First John, first John chapter two, verse 27. But the anointing, mm, the anointing, the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. The anointing abides in you. If and ye ye not, and say, and ye need, and you need not any man to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, and it is true and not a lie. And even as it has taught you, you should abide in it. The power of truth is the anointing of God upon you. Hallelujah. By loving in Ephesians, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against wickedness, against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. So it says, so, so therefore, stand ye therefore. Stand ye therefore. And after you have done all to do to stand, stand therefore with the whole arm of God, putting on the, on, on, on the belt of truth. But, 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 but it, no, it says, girding your lawns with truth. That's the belt of truth. That's the first part of the armor. The first part of the armor to fight the devil is truth. That's what it says. After you have done all to stand, Stand ye therefore having your lawn girded with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The first piece of the armor is truth. And truth holds it all together. Hallelujah. It says the word of truth, the spirit of truth, and the God of truth. What is that? Somebody tell me what that is. The word of truth, the spirit of truth, and the God of truth is what? Is what? Thank you. It's the Trinity. It's a time you're on God. It's the fullness of God. It's the Trinity. The word of truth. The God of truth. And the spirit of truth. Because Jesus is the word. Amen. Amen. It's the Trinity. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm closing right now. So what is the application? The application. Psalm 91 verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You see, that that's your application. That the truth is going to be your shield. Going to fight every fiery dart of the enemy. Hallelujah. First, Je First Samuel verse 12, verse 4. Chapter 12, verse 4. Only, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. That's application, guys. Only fear the Lord. Don't fear what the world is telling you. Only fear the Lord and serve him with truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he has done. Hallelujah. The power of truth. Hmm. Third John chapter 1, verse 4. John, as he writes his letter, and I believe this is God. He's writing through God. He said, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. I have no greater joy, that's God, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. Somebody say, you should know the truth, and the truth should what? 
make you free. You can say set it if you want to, but I don't have to be free again. I'm already free. Amen. I've been made free. Hallelujah. First John 1 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So as I close, hear me, hear me good. I ain't gonna call any names, but it's political season. You're gonna hear a whole lot of lies. A whole lot of lies. Hmm. More lies than you can handle. It's political season. But no truth. Hallelujah. The other thing with all the different groups and agendas, they all are filled with lies. A lot of them got some good things, but there's a lot of lies in a lot of these groups and agendas. And now we got AI, artificial intelligence, is here to stay. Hmm. Oh, what's the deal with artificial intelligence? I don't know much about it. I'm learning about it. Well, just hearing it, artificial intelligence will will make you think that you're seeing and hearing truth. That's why it's artificial. It will make you think that you're hearing and seeing truth. But is the whole truth? Is it really truth? So in this season, be, be ready. Anyway, I'm done. Let, let, let me say this here. So as we walk through, have a kingdom mindset, which is truth. And I wrote this down, Candace, while y'all was singing. I fight my battles with truth. And here's the truth. There is a God, and his name is Jehovah. He cannot lie, and he cannot die. The truth is that your soul is going to spend eternity somewhere, heaven or hell. That's truth. The truth is that Jesus is coming. He's coming back. He's coming back. When he's looking for a church without spot or blemish. So in other words, the truth is that you don't have to die in the lie. You don't have to die in the lie of this world. Hmm. The world is selling a whole lot of stuff right now. But you should know the truth. And the truth should make you free. I'm going to be at the front. If you want to buy this CD, I'll be out there. Pray for me, Lord. We thank you for this word. You did it, God. You are our truth. You are our salvation. You are our hero. You are our only help. You are truth. In Jesus' name.